everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are talking to some writer and directors from the Horror Shorts Block. We have Miss Anna and Miss Lex, and uh, we're about to ask them and find out more about their films. So ladies, can you please introduce yourselves and tell us about your projects? Anna, would you like to go first? Sorry? Oh, I was asking if you wanted to go first. Oh, you'll go first. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. I'm Lex. Um, I am the writer and um, the very messy star of Victim. Uh, Victim is based off of a feature that I wrote um, many a moon ago. And uh, I'm currently in Los Angeles, uh, just, you know, living the dream. <laughs> and I'm Anna. I uh, am a writer and director, and I also produced my short film Synchronization, which is uh, something that can be described as um, sci-fi uh, horror comedy. But the horror thing was actually added after you programmed my film as a horror, which is great. And actually it's something I would like you to talk about. <laughs> Oh, well, it was very mysterious, that's for sure. I, I very much so enjoyed it. Um, we just also did have Miss Chloe join in. Miss Chloe, can you please introduce yourself and your project? Hi, um, my name is Chloe Carroll and I directed Ticks and Stay Quiet. Uh, I'm on the road to LA, so I'm sorry if this cuts out at any point, but I'm gonna try and stay home for as long as possible. That's perfect. <laughs> Miss Lex is also on the road in LA, so. Awesome. Very yes. crazy. <laughs> Maybe we'll bump into each other. It'll be crazy. And we can just do the live stream together in a car. Aww. <laughs> um, so the uh, three films that we are discussing are Victim, Synchronization, and uh, Ticks. Oh, excuse me. Four films. Ticks slash Stay Quiet. I apologize. Um, so I wanted to ask uh, just kind of like a question for everybody. Um, what inspired y'all to do something with a horror and or... Um, fantasy, I would say, sci-fi bent? Um, so guess, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, so I grew up the fat, weird kid amongst Abercrombie and Fitch models. Um, so the idea of, like, monsters and transformation has always been this, like, really big theme for me. Um, my dad was a special effects artist for, like, D-rate horror films, like, right outside of Philly. And from a very young age, he pretty much kind of showed me how that the monsters in movies aren't real. Um, and he like showed me how to do like the like the spooky makeup and stuff like that. And that was really cool. Um, like Hellraiser, all that jazz never freaked me out. But the Boo Woman from Princess Bride terrified me because she was someone I could plausibly like run into on the street. Like I'm not going to run into chatter or anything like that. Um, but for victims specifically, it's really kind of taking on this theme of bullies um, and this idea of no matter how bad you think you are, there's always something bigger, stronger, and so much worse. And I'm like a big fan of like knocking bad people down a peg. So that's me. That's what I do. Definitely. I, could, I can understand that uh, bigger fish sort of situation um, that comes from victim. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Anna, same same question. For you, you said that it was more like a science fiction fantasy um, angle yes. you were going for. Yes, but uh, it also wasn't um, a science fiction from the beginning because uh, the first thing that came to me was a story. But, um, and then I started to write a script and I, I realized that um, actually I feel very limited but uh, by the uh, reality by the present uh, time and by the all the facts that I should include like for example if someone's dying we should call the ambulance uh, the ambulance right so uh, I decided to move the the story to the future to give myself more freedom to not to limit myself with um, with the story with, with the characters with how they behave with the uh, um with what will happen so that's that's how it um it became a sci-fi um genre mm -hmm. that's very very wise 
and mm -hmm. uh, Miss Chloe uh, for ticks and stay quiet. Why did so, you uh, event? Oh, I um, I started uh, making horror films because I just I loved horror and I loved um, special effects, uh, and I started making them to also um, I guess build on being a better filmmaker. So like through show medium, uh, you know, it's not too expensive to just keep exploring different stories. And um, I got to write uh, Stay Quiet. Um, I teamed up with filmmakers in Philadelphia. State. But for no particular reason, just because we loved we loved horror movies and we wanted to make more and all get better at filmmaking, so that eventually we can do a feature together and prove that we um, we can do a longer a longer film. And then Ticks, it was the same kind of thing. Like we just had this like super gory idea, and everyone's like super freaked out by Ticks, including myself. Uh, and I was like, how can we just expand on that and just make something to really like gross people out with sticks? <laughs> yeah, you had really great um, SFX uh, design on on um, on ticks. And then for uh, Stay Quiet, I just wanted to say really quickly, that thing with the pie, I was like, dude, the timer wasn't done yet. You just ruined her pie. What's that about? <laughs> like, that's the thing that I was most upset about. I don't know why. Um, that does bring up though an, a, uh, a separate question about um, set design and also about uh, if you had special effects or um, any sort of like props. Um, and that, that question goes to everybody because everyone's uh, set design was very, very interesting. Um, so the director, Larry Brand, um, who I love to death, uh, he passed away last February. Um, he used to tell people that uh, we made this movie for $150 worth of contact lenses and hot dogs <laughs> because that's like literally what we did. Um, I spent like $75 on the lenses and then um, all the rest of the budget on like just food shopping and everything else was just like what we had inside of our home at the time. Um, but, you know, it was just like, using what kind of like my dad taught me and it was like, you know, make stuff with what you have available to you. Um, and then he, he also fought for the Roomba to make the guest appearance because he thought it was hilarious. And I was like, I don't know, is it funny? But anytime I show people the short, they always laugh. I was like, oh no, is it supposed to be funny? I don't know. So that's me. <laughs> I don't know. I think that the Roomba, um, it just makes it so, it makes it very real, it, which is strange because like I don't even have a Roomba, but just a Roomba is something that's just so normal that maybe that was what is part of what makes it a little bit funny that it's like, oh yeah, I understand this. I, it's very definitive where we are in time and space. I don't know. I don't have a Roomba. <laughs> um, and same question to Miss Anna. Y'all had beautiful set design. Is that a, your location, was that a place that belonged to someone or is that a place that y'all found? It's, a, it's an old uh, villa just outside of Warsaw. And actually uh, it's a home of uh, one of the actors that uh, uh, worked with me. So she, um, let us film in her home. And uh, about the set design, um, it is very important um, for me, um, the, 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 all the visual stuff, I, when my idea, when ideas come to me, they come very vivid and uh, in a very specific um, way. So everything that you see um, in the result, I actually, I wrote it in a script already it was like the, the the plants the colors the textures everything was there and on set was just the thing about um you know doing this for very little money <laughs> um but i had a very um amazing set uh, designer very professional and um she was a magician and she, she was able to to create this uh, with really very little financial, um, very little budget. Uh, so, and you also asked about um, props. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
uh, no, no props, no, uh, the, uh, the effects, special effects? Yes, no. either. Both. Yeah, so, uh, well, because I we have one special effect and it's very um, uh, simple. So do you, do you, would you like me to say how we did it or, because you know this, the, there's this levitation scene. If that, if that is up to you, or if you want to keep no, it. No, because secret, I just, I just didn't get the, the question. Secret, that's fine too. Sorry? I said, if you want to keep it a secret because magicians don't tell their secrets, that's fine too. Just, I was just talking about just the general overview. Ah, okay. okay. Happy. Yeah, so no, just uh, the, the levitation. So uh, I was, uh, because never, some, no one never asked me about this. And I was always, I always wanted to say that uh, they just did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, Miss Chloe? Same question, because you had uh, you had a lot of effects in uh, ticks in particular. Yeah, um, so um, one of the girls who produced with me, her name's Brittany Snayman, she's an SFX artist, and uh, she wanted to build, like, instead of doing things via effects, because they always, um, you know, look a bit worse when you do it visually, we wanted to actually build something, and she was like, oh my god, I'm going to build, like, a giant tick to come out with this girl. And she was operating it like right off camera with like coat hangers. Um, like, she like just DIY this like uh, big giant tick that was eating the inside of this girl. And literally it was just so cool. I actually, um, I have uh, BTS that shows her doing it, uh, which is funny. It's on my uh, YouTube channel on Fair Crypt. And she just did such a good job. Like she just did it with like SFX wax. Um, but I'm, I'm really glad we chose to not do it like visual effects uh, just because it would have just looked a little bit faker. Um, but, and then with Stay Quiet, we didn't really have uh, any SFX apart from he's like wielding a knife at this girl. So it was just a, a fake, a fake knife that was built to look like a real knife. Uh, I think that they're amazing, honestly. You know, that it's, I mean, that's not like a big bloody gory SFX thing, but they look so real. And they're just like they're made to like snap if you touch someone with them. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. And I noticed um, for all three films, I think all three films were incredibly efficient with their use of uh, the camera angles and the building of tension. So um, I guess um, Miss Lex, if you wanted to talk about um, the camera angles and the building of tension for victim. Um, I wish I knew anything about camera angles. Uh, I do not. <laughs> um, but the building of tension I can definitely speak to in the respect that um, in the original version of Victim, the monster is actually supposed to be a vampire because I think vampires are cool and Larry did not. He was like, I love this. I'll totally make this. It can't be a vampire. And I went, but why? And he was like, because vampires are stupid. And I went, no, you're stupid, Larry. You're 72 years old. What do you know? Um but so basically the original ending was supposed to be he goes up and he finds uh the body of the real homeowners in the bathtub um and he was like no i'm just not feeling it and then i went all right well what if he goes up and he finds me in the bathtub and delire is like now now we're cooking with gas and i was like oh okay so the, the tension and the buildup, I think, comes into the idea that we really do set up your generic slasher film up until the point where it's absolutely not. Um, and I think the switch there makes it kind of like refreshing and it doesn't take too long to get to that switch, which is exciting. Definitely. I actually wrote for my notes here for yours, flipped the script. So <laughs> um, exactly the, like y'all achieved it, yay. Um, and then for Miss Anna, I actually have a audience comment. Um, Anna, I loved your color saturation and the horror aspect was, was it could be horrific for men to be traded or bought sold as a commodity based on a woman's needs. Um, I don't understand the, the second part. Okay, so I think what it was is that um, since you're in the future here, there are no men. Um, and then they had that one man who basically like shows up on their step, essentially like as like a gift wrapped um, sort of like, you know, um, I think that's probably what it's asking. Could it be horrific for men to be traded 
bought and sold as a commodity. I still don't get it. Sorry, the, what, uh, what does it mean that, that they are traded? Uh, um, just because uh, whenever you have, like in America at least, whenever you have, uh, we have like a lot of exploitation films where women are exploited in that way. It's like, oh, you know, women are uh, prostitutes or um, sell themselves uh, or are sold for whatever reason. Um, mm -hmm. I think maybe possibly this person was asking, you're reversing it where like, you know, yeah. the, the man is the person who is the commodity. Yes. And how is that? Um, uh, and how, is that man, how does uh, is he uh, is this person asking how uh, male audience feels feels about that or sure. let's go with that oh, sorry if it's not that um, no I, I, it's not my question <laughs> uh, well um, yes well yeah I uh, uh, when this idea came to me I that um, um, this uh, reversion of um, of the of dynamics between sexes, I, I found it very funny. But uh, at the same time, when I presented my idea to different people, and there were also men between them, and uh, I was um, presenting it, I like it was an utopia. Well, because for me, it's only it's about it's not about a world without men. It's about um, the world without patriarchy so um so for me it's a very uh, well um utopian world and some people reacted like it was something um um oh yeah like it's a horror <laughs> like something opposite something dark mm -hmm. and uh so there was also that and i and well i i appreciate it also well this is uh this is my point of view my uh, my creation and my vision and I'm really I want to invite everyone to to this and um, yeah <laughs> and that makes sense so I mean it is a, it is a very unique uh, viewpoint especially since uh, uh, things tend to be very patriarchal most things tend to be very patriarchal uh, so whenever we have something where the focus is not on men, Sometimes they get a little bit scared and they're like, well, what about me? Um, when really you're just trying to make something that resonates with you um, as a yeah. woman. Uh, we do have another audience question and it is, what are your favorite horror movies and, and or what horror director inspires you? That's a question for everyone. Yes, question for everyone. Um, and Hi. Ms. Chloe hasn't been able to answer in a minute. So we will start it with Ms. Chloe. I, I, um, I would say uh, but I just love Nightmare on Elm Street. And I love it because I think it's so creative how uh, Wes Craven took this idea of something that you can't escape in real life and made you afraid of it. Like as a horror lover, I think that's just genius because you can't avoid sleeping, which means even if you aren't particularly scared of the movie, you're going to think about it as you go to sleep. I know that's such a, a sick answer, but uh, I think that's genius for horror lovers. Um, and I love Wes Craven. I love all of his stuff. I think he's so talented in the stories he creates. Um, so yeah, that's, that's mine. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Wes Craven's great. And uh, Flex? Um, my favorite movie of 2019 was Ready or Not. Um, I'm a big fan of horror that like lulls you into a false sense of security uh, and like makes you have like a lot of fun, something that has like awareness. Um, I'm, I also really dig period horror. So stuff like The Conjuring um, is like kind of my jam. Um, Insidious is my favorite horror movie. Uh, I would die for Patrick Wilson, not to be dramatic. Um, but in that movie, like we feel like that family actually loves each other. And I think that's really important because it becomes that much scarier when stuff starts going wrong. We won't talk about the fact that two of the kids disappear after the uh, midpoint, but that's fine. We're good. We're great. Uh, and the orphanage is also really great. 
It is. Um, and Miss Anna, same uh, question. Yeah, and I, um, since I'm not really sure if you're if you're not um, a fan of horror, that's fine. If we want to uh, take that question and expand it just to like genre films, um, you know, like what genre films or filmmakers inspire you? Well, uh, actually, I can uh, I, I I can tell about one one horror thing that I watched recently and I really liked it. Even if I'm not a big horror fan, uh, this uh, it was Midsommar by Ari Aster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I really like that. And um, uh, there was also another uh, American horror, Get Out. Those I love this, 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 Yeah, but um, generally, generally, I'm I'm not a very big horror fan, mm -hmm. but uh, my partner is, and she forced me to. She's still forcing me to to watch them. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very wide genre, so completely understandable. Um, my bookshelf behind me is actually only Clive Barker stuff. Uh, so, you know, the obsession is weird. Um, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our, well, sorry, two things. One thing is audience comment. The use of humor throughout many of the films was definitely a strength. Chloe, that doobie 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 song is stuck in my head. Yeah. So we um, Music was pretty amazing in your shorts. Oh, thank you. We didn't um, we didn't know we were going to use that song, and then I was looking for a song that I wanted to use in the end credits, and I heard that, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to have that. Um, so yeah, we just got really lucky. I was just searching for songs, and we just licensed the rights to that one. And I love that. I love. I love horror movies where they're like really creepy and like really unnerving to watch and then like happy music plays afterwards <laughs> because then you, your audience doesn't know how to feel or like oh, I'm really creeped out but it's kind of funny um <laughs> so I, I I love the the use of um happy music in really disturbing shorts and um Tix we had an original composer do that it was a I think Miss Chloe cut out. The internet has betrayed us. So yes, yes, that happens though, because like y'all are in cars. Um, last question though, um, and then I guess we'll continue going in the order that we had been previously going in, which is uh, what projects do y'all have coming up? And then after this uh, round of questioning, we're going to end the phone call. So thank you so much for your time. What projects y'all have coming up or working on? Uh, Miss Lex? Um, so I am actually doing a whole bunch of projects with these really awesome um, TikTok stars. Yeah. Um, and we're actually shooting the feature version of Victim in December uh, in upstate New York. So I'm really excited about that. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Miss Lex. And then uh, Miss Anna, what projects do you have coming up? Yes, um, I'm working on a documentary. I've been filming, I've been shooting it for a year. I'm uh, my own cinematographer, my own director, and it's a one woman project. And it's about a um, young uh, woman and her 50 dogs. So. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> And uh, Miss Chloe, what projects are you currently working on you have coming up? Um, I am trying to uh, get a feature off the ground that I wrote. Uh, I did the short film version of it and I put it in the festival circuit this year. So I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. It's um, a story about uh, a relationship between a human and a vampire and how um, these women learn to kind of love each other even though they're very different and uh i mean just in life like one is like a cold-blooded vampire and the other girl is a nurse and she helps people and the vampire kills people so they have to kind of um work past their differences and uh it's just an interesting kind of like a uh, relationship drama but taking place in a horror world so I'm so excited about this project and hopefully I can get it made next year. 
It's called Alicia. <laughs> thank you so much. That's wonderful. And thank you again for all of y'all's time. I hope that everyone goes out and watches all of your shorts because they are incredibly beautiful and well done. And I enjoyed speaking with everyone. Thanks, thank y'all. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much.